You're tuned in to the Behind the Scenes Podcast with your host, Man Robinson, the place where educational, motivational, and inspiration collide with innovation. Be entertained while learning from some of the best actors, directors, and producers in the industry today with self-help tips that you can apply in your career. We don't just talk about it, we be about it. I'm here. Okay, so... Welcome back to another episode of Behind the Scenes. I'm your host, Man Robinson. And today's show, like I said earlier, is going to be incredible. We got, oh my God, it's this guy so accomplished, man. This this guy is, he got an extensive long list of credits. And, you know, I, I, I'm just happy, happy to be able to even know this young man and be able to run across paths and potentially work with him. So he has been seen in Hunger Games, The Walking Dead, several of Tyler Perry's movies, uh, Diary of a Mad Black Man, Daddy's Girl. Credits are endless. Classics like SWATs, Equalizer, Scully with, with Tom Hanks, Flight. He was in Flight. I'm about to watch that tonight. So we watching Flight tonight. Let me tell my wife, Flight tonight <laughs> with Disney watching it. Look no further. With no further ado, please welcome the esteemed Mr. E. Rod Mitchell. What's up, brother? I am here by the grace, by the grace. Thank you, my brother and everybody. We are here together, man. It's a beautiful thing. It's yeah, it's it's a beautiful thing. You were talking to me earlier before we, we went live, and you were talking about, you know, touching your face and whatnot. So we have to say, we have to, we have to mention it, man. We quarantined, bro. Nuts, man. It's all the cracking, man. What the? F- I want to cuss, but I ain't. Right. For real? Are you for real? We quarantined? Uh, yeah, it's kind of. I know I have been. I've been trying to. I had to go to the store today real quick. But I gloves, Matt. The first time I wore a mask was the first time today. I won't lie. My wife's like, look, baby. I was like, I know. We, You know, we got to be careful. I mean, careful is an understatement, to say the least. But. I said, you know what? I'm gonna take my little mask with me, man. And quit. But you know, just, just, and I wasn't the only one. So it's kind of, it's a, it's a unique time, brother, to say the least. We're trying to be kind, I and mean, we don't ramble on about that. But it's like, uh, it's, it's, it's real, man. It's no, very, I mean, very real. You, yeah. you have, to, you have to ramble on because you know when this first happened, you know the president wasn't rambling. Right. He I mean, wasn't. I think, I think actually, you know. You know, I ain't putting on my business in the street, but you know, I had some birthdays in November, some family, and then had the Christmas thing. You got New Year's. And I'm like, all right, I can save that money, man, and bust some more stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll tell you. But basically, my point in saying that is, it was turn, it was already turning a corner yeah. at that time, yeah. and and politically speaking. I do agree, and I will be as politically correct as I can, and still tell the truth because uh, we could have, we probably could have jumped, a, you know, jumped ahead a little bit and been a little bit more prepared. I mean, there's people losing their lives. God bless them. Uh, people that I know who are losing people. We yeah. all do. So yeah. it's, there has been a, there's been a fumble somewhere. Okay, yeah. there's a yeah. fumble out there, and, and of course they, you know, they're gonna say, you know, somebody farted, but they ain't say it wasn't me. Yeah, they're gonna say smell that. It. Yeah. You smell it though. It's stink. Yeah. <laughs> nah, I, I'm not I'm not political by any means, man. I just have thoughts yeah. that I, I go by. And I wanna say that I respect the chair, not necessarily the person sitting in the chair. This virus has affected the, the industry. And I don't, you know, we're not gonna dwell on it too much. Everybody by this time knows what it is and what what's happening to the, our industry, the, the film industry. Um, but the topic of the day is an actor. This is strictly hot topic actor. Got How, what the does an actor do in this time of quarantine? What do they do to keep everything sharp? What do they well, do? Craft wise, keep it sharp. Is that what we're talking about in particular? Yes. Because obviously we're all affected. We all are. We all are affected by the industry. And uh, in essence, because, uh, you know, things have things of I mean, hell, we there are always ups and downs and slow times. We all deal with that. But we're all affected globally about that. 
But craft wise to keep yourself sharp. I just had a conversation with a good friend of mine. I started to touch my chin just now, but I'm scared to do that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I had a good conversation with someone. Actually, I talked to my manager. I was I ain't trying to sell him. I ain't no political, uh, what do you call it? Uh, publicity plug. Talking to Craig earlier, which you've talked to. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Fortunately and unfortunately, you talked to Craig. Cool dude, though. He's cool. He's cool. <laughs> He said, though, no, that's my guy. We yeah. talk about life every other day, every day. But I was saying, for the actor, back to your question about the craft and keeping sharp, um, the obvious is to, you know, the obvious is to, what what was that thing you wanted to read that you hadn't looked at, had a chance to read yet? What was that, you know, what was that piece you wanted to say? You know, hey, we could do a Zoom and, like, do a, a read together. You know, my wife is in the industry. She works on the other side of the camera in the backstage of the stage and they have what they have they do the zooms they're trying to work still by the grace of god thank god um find a way to get together and and do a reading of sorts individually what what was that piece of literature that you have to take a look at you know you have a chance to look at right now you might have a chance to look at that educate yourself in that way um because of social distancing you know literally social distancing is kind of hard to do that but we have these the forms of media by the grace of god it's very interesting we have these forms that we can actually get together so to stay sharp those are things you can do like you know like i said what haven't what have you not read yet you know what have you not taken a look at yet what have you not listened to that was going on yet because everybody's running and ripping running and ripping in life so take the time and absorb some of those things if it takes you know, you got a family. If it takes the end of the night, everybody shut down, everybody quiet, clean, sanitized, we cool, you know what I'm saying? Take mm-hmm. that hour, hour and a half and listen to, you know, actor studio or whatever. That's just, I, I just tossed it out there. It don't matter what it is. You can look at special features on some DVDs or some films you know, back in the old, you know, old days for us. But, you know, I, I remember looking at Devil in the Blue Dress and you know Carl Franklin, the, the, the wonderful director, you know Denzel and Don Cheadle, those guys. He has special features on that DVD that you get to see actors actual auditions. I, you know, we had a chance if you pull it up, address DVD. If you still got your DVD player or your PlayStation Three or Four, you can put that in there and you can look at Don Cheadle, you know, and, and you know auditioning for the role. That's sharpening. Yeah, what the other actors do. And also finding your way. I mean, at the same time, you are actually building your craft because if you're still alive and you're documenting what's happening in your life in general, that's what you bring to the table because you're a culmination of your experiences. So I think right now everybody's pretty inspired. When we get a chance to like digest it, hopefully we're lucky enough to survive it. Mm-hmm. It's gonna be a lot of a lot of education, a lot of experience that you can bring to the table. It doesn't have to be about a pandemic, it's just about where you are as a human being and are you actually taking note of yourself in the circumstances that's growth in itself to me personally that's craft and then of course there's the literal craft there's the the one plus one is two the script mm-hmm. the plays you know the, the, the screenplay interviews and hell get that zoom going let's read this play we ain't do that yet man let's get together and read some august wilson right now matter of fact let's get together and read man robinson's script right now how many else can get on this zoom and then we can find out how to bring this literature off the page at the same time stretching ourselves as actors illuminating something for the playwright screenplay and at the same time we're moving forward still we're still moving forward so we get to bring those things to life and Find ways to do that. Like my man Brad, he's doing some really great stuff. I'm hoping he still let me work with him too. So, you know, that's what we do to sharpen the craft, you know. Pay attention to where you are. You pay attention to where you are, and then at the same time, remember the things that you may not have had the time to do at a certain time in your life. Well, right now, I think everybody is at the precipice of doing something great, if nothing else surviving, obviously. But everybody has the potential now. It's really about to be on. I tell you what, it's like it's like the passage. You know, those who made it across, I ain't trying to make it about black, white, whatever, but those who got across in that boat, well, we're looking at them, me and you and us. Yeah. So here we are. You know, they'd say, what's that in your hand? And I'm telling myself the same thing, FYI. So that's so, so with that, with that, so, so with that, with that, <laughs> Sorry, deep, that deep concentration of your craft, yeah. this fact check that I'm doing, it, it must be correct. And it's by fandom and it states that you originally uh, auditioned for the character Citizen on The Walking Dead, but producers are impressed and they created a role for you. 
Is that true? <laughs> yes, man, that's deep. Yeah, y'all, y'all went back. I'm trying to. I'm knocking stuff over. I got to call my wife. They found that out. What the hell? What's going on right <laughs> here? That's that. Hey, credit to my producer, uh, Brittany Knight. She found that information. She the truth. Shout out to Brittany. That is the truth. My wife, my my fiance at the time. And my wife now, we read for that in a sunroom, you know, and uh, I felt great about it. And, you know, they were like, well, we, we like him, you know, and then they created the guy. And well, he's, Paul is a part of another character in the, the, the comic series goes on forever. But they, they, they came back and threw me a bone in a great way. And. You know, I remember that audition, man. That was that was real. And my wife actually read with me. She actually, she's not sitting here, but she read with me on that. And I was like, man, I didn't get that. Really? Come on, man. They must have been drunk, man. You see, <laughs> do you feel what I was feeling? <laughs> they felt something. Something yeah, happened. By the grace of God, by the grace of God, they came back like about six months later. And it was like, you know what? We like this guy. And it was like, come on, Rods, be a part of the team. So I had a couple episodes. Just glad to have Walker Dead on my resume. Keep it moving. Yes. <laughs> I'm glad to have that's, that. That's that's dope, man. It's always good to hear something like that. Yeah. And when you when you go into audition for something and you get something totally different and they create a role for you, that's that's dope. And and your wife being there with you is something that that's special. And you also said that she she's in something with plays. She does something with plays right now, right? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, she works on the the, uh, the, the, the theatrical, uh, excuse me, the stage play side. She's in the Woodrow Arts Center. She works over yeah. there and does things in offices over there. But she's in the industry also. So she, you know, she she gets it. Well, she did. She gets it, you know. So she's on the, um, the theater side. But she's, like, superb, in my opinion. I think she's pretty cool. But um, that's what she does. And Woodrow Arts Center is doing some really cool stuff right now because they're scrambling. Trying to uh, not burp, so I don't want to do that. So I, I didn't touch my face. But don't touch your face, man. Hey, bleach. we ain't playing out here, bro. I got bleach. Okay, but don't do that either. Don't put no bleach on your face. You don't see the that. ash? You see the ash? Yeah. 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 You need something else. Yeah, yeah that's something bad. else. You got to so, edit I'm going to edit all that out. <laughs> so, so, but we got to go. I got to go here, though. So, yeah. your wife, theatrical, you you on stage. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, you're, you're on movies, you're in movies and TV shows, but. Oh. Yeah. You, but you have a stage background. You actually were back when Tyler Perry first started out. Am I correct on that? Uh, I, I'd be remiss if I said you were not. So you got me again. Who are these people <laughs> that's find him? Can you please? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I, I cheated on that when you actually told me that when, when we had our first meeting. So, uh, but Which is, is that where you... you, you you guys met you and your wife on, during yeah, that time. Yeah, my wife and I met. Uh, my wife, my wife and I met. Uh, that's been about ten years ago. But Tyler and I, man, God bless him. God bless him, good brother. That, that's real talk. Ain't saying it just because it's politically correct. But as a person, say what you. I know him as a person. Uh, I met Tyler back in nineties, so we go back about you know twenty four years, twenty three, twenty four years. So this is before you know we go back before. You know, before we, before we, you know, I, hell, I got a little bit of a name, and everybody knows Tyler Perry, and I still, I'm, a, you know, we we just was trying to find our way, man. And I met a guy who was definitely, I will say, I know they say James Brown is the hardest working man in show business, but I think he might have handed the TP. I ain't gonna lie, that boy ain't gonna lie to you. He, I'm sure he's not the only one. I met some really, really hardworking people, but Tyler, God bless him, ain't nobody giving away nothing. That cat works we go way back and uh, that was from the stage that was coming out of the alliance theater at the time this was 96 you know what i'm saying um had my i had my you know, undergraduate degree in, in theater and all that good stuff so i'm from the stage man and yeah so and we met he was on his way to build his empire you know and i happened to cross with him and had a chance to work with him and actually become friends um hell check in the other day you know, interesting, man. You know, we've come and gone, but he's one of those cats that I've known for a very long time. I'm extremely thankful to him and proud. Did it again. Uh, very proud of his accomplishments, to say the least. And, uh, yeah, that's my brother, man. I ain't gonna front. Actually, that's my friend. So I'm gonna go ahead and call it like that. Well, that's that's good to have a friend like that. We we can only hope that the audience and, and all the other filmmakers coming up can, 
you know, use this type of energy and, and it's possible. I mean, it's possible to get to where you are, to tell where Tyler Perry is and other great black filmmakers and, and actors. So that's what this show is all about. But I got a question though. Yeah, yeah. You come from stage, you're on, you're on TV now. Can you tell us the difference? What's the difference between stage and TV as far as an acting standpoint? Oh my God, stage, TV, stage being inside TV and film. I mean, I'm sure the answer is going to probably coincide, man. Doesn't matter. Stage is uh, there's not there's nothing that can replace the the electricity of live. Uh, you've heard it. There's no cut. There's no go back to one. There's there's none of that. There's no pickups. So that level of uh, exhilaration, um, that level of preparation that level of, of enjoyment and the relationship between the audience and the cast, because that's what I quote my brother, Kenny Leon, friend of mine, Kenny, Kenny, um, there's nothing like the, the, the experience because it's live for one, we get that part, but there's something, there's a reciprocation that happens between the audience and the actor or the performer or the, Whatever it doesn't mean to say performing because comedian, you know, whatever you are, if it's live, it's live, and there's something, there's an exchange that's happening in real time that can never be duplicated in that time. The show you could do the same show tomorrow, still ain't gonna be the same show because you're not gonna be the same person. For one, you're a day older, <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. So you you can't be the same, you know what I'm saying? Right. So there's something unique about every single time you get a chance to step out there. And it is the most terrifying experience in the world. But the terrifying part is the respect in my, and, and after too many years for me to try to explain, it's still the level, I've turned that into a level of respect, that fear or that nervousness, it's a part of the process. But there's nothing that can like take the place of that and you can never duplicate it ever. It's like snowflakes. There's only one and they're all individual. So every show is different. It's 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 all those things. And I wish I had this quote, Kit Gash, another phenomenal director. I'm gonna keep it moving. Kit Gash, great director, wonderful person. Uh, runs the the the, the, uh, the musical theater program at NYU. He's been there about six years now. Wonderful, wonderful, brilliant, brilliant. Hope that he quotes the cast, and I can't quote it, but I'll text it and I'll find it from a book. It talks about what it takes to go out there on the stage, you know. So we'll leave it at that. Now, film and TV. Oh man, it's uh, you know. It's, I think you just answered it with, with one answer. Answer okay, both. Boom. I'm done. Yeah, I'm done. Because obviously, if 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 play is all of that, then that must mean that film is not. And film is like you said, back to one action cut. Edit this. Edit that. Put this where over there. Yeah. So yeah, 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 yeah. And let me add. Okay. Let's add. It's not necessarily a not that. It's just it's another approach to concentrating what's happening in those stage experiences for film and TV. So if we're gonna say cut, let's go to the next take, or let's cut, we'll do it again if that's one, or if that's 10, or if that's 20, hopefully it's not that, unless you're Stanley Kubrick, um, God bless him. Um, you're trying to concisely put all of that into that one drop, and that's another craft in itself, okay? So I'm trying to say all that wonderful energy that's happening live on stage and that one night, the next night, they, okay, great. When you get that, you know, you got that one shot, but as the actor, you should be trying to put that concentrated amount into every take, every single time, because every time you have opportunity, all the opportunities have, have that good. We could take the meat, leave the bones with it. That's my little yeah. That, that that's I mean that's 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 information that that's you know I, I did a uh, last year November of last year Chad Lawson Cooper actually he's a playwright as well he only black playwright on Broadway by the way and he wanted to turn that play uh, Justice on Trial into a movie and they they sought on my talents to do so so I uh, wrote the script into um, that guy yeah that guy there 
But I wrote it in God bless God. I could touch my face. I've been outside. I was gonna say, hey, hey amen. I'm like this too. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, he, right, let's celebrate. I got bleach. I got bleach. <laughs> but he uh so I wrote it into a I wrote the screenplay. I wrote the screenplay. Yeah. And you know, he when we got on set though, you know, in a play, the construction worker was dressed as a construction worker. Now we're in court. The right. Doctor had a the thing around his neck and everything. So they came to set like that. And I'm like, bro, no, that that is not that's not how it works. So we had to <laughs> take that all away and kind of let the audience know that their careers another way. So things like that, that that changes over from from play. So I had a chance to experience that and actually teach as well. But you're not gonna get away that quick. You got you caught on fire. I got away, I'm good. I got a way to go up quarantine. <laughs> I, yeah, me too, man. That's why. That's why I'm looking at you. Look at me. <laughs> I, I got a little gym in my garage now, man. I don't know what I'm gonna do in there. So wait a minute, though. You getting around the question? You caught on fire in a movie or a TV show? Say it again. Did did you catch on fire? Didn't something happen to you in a TV show? Uh, uh you know what? That's that's very wait. Hold up. <laughs> <laughs> This this is Brittany again, man. She on her I'm thing. I'm fired all of y'all. All of y'all are fired. <laughs> y'all got to catch these people. They're ahead of you, though. Yeah. How did that, I mean, how? Blue, blue flame. <laughs> how, 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 how was that, man? How was, I see that on TV a lot, but how, how was that? Behind the scenes Ooh. version. Of I, I, for one, I'll just say this. Research. For one, I'll say because it was somewhat in you know, powers was a Sony project, you know, it's been, it's been a minute now. And it was, it just said, they said something about Marvel. And I was like, I'm in, <laughs> I'll take the day. Cause it's like a subsidiary of sorts from Marvel. And it did what it did. I don't know what it's doing now. I think it's, it's the film, but they, they did their thing. And it was just so wonderful to be a part of it. And the effects for that, uh, to, uh, to be <laughs> blue magma, was my character's name, and that was that was just like really cool, man. <laughs> it was like it was like really cool to like set yourself on fire. Which is, I mean, was it real fire? I mean, we had to do that. No, 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 no you know, well, it's been seven years. I healed up. I healed up. Oh. I did good. Was you a little bit lighter yeah, before? Yeah. Were you light skinned hey. before this happened or what? Wow. Hey. <laughs> no, I've been light skinned now. <laughs> 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 no man it was effects and stuff and it was a little bit and i was glad to kind of just be a part of it man i was hoping to come up come out of it but sometimes as you know as actors we do things you know we work because we love the work you know sometimes it's monetary at times don't get me wrong we've been through that situation where you got to do it because because it, it changes people be saying they want to do this and do that they want to you know be this whatever it is it becomes different when it becomes your means to make a living when it becomes a means to put food on your table you know to pay your mortgage rent whatever whatever you want to call it or who know who knows what you're doing help some family it becomes different so as an actor for that love of that art and that was one of those cool opportunities man just to have just the footage you know sometimes it's about building that reel you know what i'm saying and it was just good to be there i saw i got the clip you know it was like i Made myself get <laughs> I didn't, <laughs> but figured out how to do it in an audition and it worked. They both. <laughs> so anyway, that was long story was, short. Was that was that like the the most outrageous or the most rememberable times you had on set? Far as giving that much to a, to a role and to a character, giving that much. Or, or say the amount we give to a role or a character. That's one thing. I'm gonna put that to the side. But as far as like spectacular moments in your career where you feel like something really, you know, you like somewhere you really want to be and just ended up being there by effort and work and, you know, preparation and, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, as much as you think you had something to do with it, race, don't forget. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. um, I still got to go back to. I still got to go back to that dude, D, man, that, that Denzel, man, that, that dude, man, that's, you know, that's our big brother, man, that's, you know, mm -hmm. our uncle, that's our pops and all those things. I just say uncles, I don't want to get mad, you know what I'm saying? Just being able to do flight for me was, you know, I mean, Hunger Games was, I mean, 
phenomenal, man. Don't get me wrong. Watching some wonderful talent, man. The Stanley Tucci's of the world, man. You know, I mean, just, just hell, the late, great, you know, the young man. But, but, you know, Denzel, man, in that moment in flight, you know, I was, I was in a life where I was actually on stage at the time doing a show at the actual outfit, which is down there on Lucky Street in downtown Atlanta. You know, mm-hmm. wonderful uh, ex-artistic director, Tom Key, one of my dear friends. I was doing a play at the time and had an audition for the movie. And, you know, we went in and did the thing. And I was almost late for the audition because they switched it up. You know, I mean, we had cell phones still. It ain't been that long ago, but it was kind of like I got in, did my thing. And I said, bam, I prepared for it. and did my thing. And the cast director asked me, she said, do you know who you're talking to in this scene? I was like, yeah, that's that's the dude. That's, that's Denzel. She's like, okay. I said, you want me to run it one more time? She's like, no, nah, you're good. Leave it at that. And there you go. So to get in the room with one of my, you know, somebody I look up to. I don't like to say idols. I don't like dealing with words are very specific. Somebody I look up to, you know, and uh, and actually a, a good a good brother and, and family and friends. People just, you know. Just, just wonderful people, man. That was still in my in my after I've looked at a few things, like man, just to be in the room with that cat, you know, and and him doing what he was doing, me not knowing, but reacting in real time because that's what it is, right? <laughs> uh, message. <laughs> so um, being there in that position over time you know, waiting to get to a place where you can work with some people that you really admire, you know, and you love their craft and you love their, their work ethic and things like that. Flight is still like, you know, it's it's up there. It's, Tom Cruise is great. Kenneth Branagh is great. Uh, Felicia Rashad is great. Uh, I mean, I mean, there's a bunch of people you can toss out there. Great people. Idris is a great guy. Oprah's dope. Uh, I mean, I can go on and on about the people you in the, you, know, you had the privilege of sharing a space with, you know. We're all human. We have we have a right to that. But in the industry, that's your job. So you can't just bust up in there and say I'm a human being. You gotta earn the way to get in some way, form or fashion, but also there's grace. So there's a ton of people that you have a chance to cross paths with. Um and 99 percent percent of those people are actually pretty nice people in my opinion, Um, because Tom is great. Tom Cruise is a dope dude. Whatever they do, I work hard. It's a hard working man. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know, call it what you want. But I was glad to be able to share some space with him too. And and tons of one. I mean, tons of, hell, Kathy Bates, man. I'm talking about the sweetest, you know, you know, sweetest, sweetest person, you know, Cynthia Nixon. Like I said, there's a ton of people. I try to run down the list, man. I must be getting old. Because it's like... Well, I'm but, glad you did that, though, because right. my, my yeah, next question... Let's stop no, no, no. no I, I, okay, so stop then. So okay. I'm glad you said that because <laughs> the next question is longevity. So how do you think... How 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 does... What's your opinion and what's the key to staying having longevity? Because all the people you said are long than a mother. All of them. Infinity. There's no no shorties in there except for maybe Elder Elba. He's kind of yeah. ten years, but everybody else is. Yeah. So how- just be, yeah, yeah. I mean, okay. Uh, I think the key to longevity to me at this stage, and I'm not quite there yet, but I had a chance to be blessed to at least put you know put in some work. Um, stay, stay, stay frosty. You know, stay. Stay excited about the industry. And I'll take that, I'll say, first of all, take that back. Stay excited about the craft because the industry is something different. That's the business part. And that's always going to be a part of it. It's like two sides. So the industry can be, you know, that can be taxing. And it's always going to be that. But the craft is something that's yours. So stay excited about the craft. I love meeting, uh, Actors who are a little younger than I am, you know, and it's like this, it's a twinkle in the eye, you know. 
I don't think I lost it. I might be a little glossy for whatever. No, it's it's twinkling like a mug. Just don't touch your I don't face. Know, let me pull my hat right now. Just okay. All right, we go. We back on. We back on. <laughs> keep the twinkle in the eye, man. Keep the excitement. Keep the keep the optimism. You know, the looking forward to something great. Like I couldn't wait. See yourself where you want to be. Um, and that's very, very important because you can also see yourself or you cannot see yourself in general. So that's a very powerful tool for a long journey. Continue to see yourself we you be. And remember, there could be times when you don't see yourself. So you gotta oh. that's the inner struggle to continue. Is that so, is that is that when the people normally start complaining about everything else around them? Is that when they stop seeing themselves? Like, like I can't believe that cast director said this, and it's working too long, and I was on set too long, and this, 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 this. Is that at the point where they start not seeing themselves? Man, let's get this straight. Being on set too long, there's no such thing as too long on set. Scrap, scrap. <laughs> That's how you can keep as long as you want. I'm, yeah, exactly. I don't know who complained about that part. Cause you know, I that's hear. one thing. And then, but, but at the same time, it's like life happens, you know, life is happening. You know, we're constantly, everybody's dealing with their own personal things and we all, you know, have life that we're dealing with. And sometimes the vision can get, you know, blurred or whatever like that. And thus, you know, try to continue to look at, well, a, a pretty prominent actor at some point told me he'd been around for a long time. I said, give me a word of encouragement of some sort, just something, you know, and I, and I was already an adult. He's like, he said, you better love it. He said, you better love it, but I have to love it. At first, you have to. You, you it gotta doesn't work it. any other way. But you got to love it. And throughout, and throughout life, through the hills and the valleys, yeah, through the through the woods, through the through the roadblocks, through the banana peels, through the through the stars, through the through the, the dynamite that happened, and all of that, and then because it's constantly moving, it's always in flux, and so that's the you know the humanistic aspect of it. So you got to love it, love that craft, and loving it is not the it's not the industry. This is not microwave. Some people get lucky and get a chance to microwave this shit. Fortunately and unfortunately for me, I've had to bake this month. <laughs> and I say S H S H I D is not a bad word. Crock pot. Yeah. Crock you got pot. To, I, I, I was in a crock pot. You got the crock pot. This, <laughs> you got yeah. the, I said the S H I D is not bad. <laughs> you got the crock pot. Yeah. You know, crock this ain't, pot, man, with a lot of water in it. What you talking about? And it's like them grits. You got the stir and Add a little water and I said them grits good, good. You put a little more butter if you want to. Put it however you want to do, but you gotta keep that thing is a grind. That's what they call the grind. That's the grind. And it's constant. It's like the sun. It's constant. And that's to me, in my opinion, because I can't tell nobody what to do, but I can tell you what I did. And whether it be profound or not, that's my truth. So that's the longevity, is the constant. Going back to that well, man, because you're gonna need it if you're trying yeah. to, if you try, if you know, you, you know, some people just want to be, you know, famous for a minute. Okay, great. It ain't really about that for me. I, just, I love this craft of of act, you know, this this actor. I love. I'm an actor, and I hold the mirror up to life and show people themselves and myself. My craft has taught me so much in my life. The literature, hell, I read your piece. I mean, I'm like. What you think about it? Tell the tell my fans what you th what you I, thought about the script, man. Hey, I don't want to spoil it, but it's a strong piece. It's a strong Thank piece, you. Thank and you. we got to get that in the can or the case, however you want to do. I don't know what we're gonna do, but it's yeah. a strong piece about life, man, about humanity, uh, the human experience. Um, you know, if you're walking around and you're breathing today, you will know somebody or something about that aspect, and that's what art does. That's what the, the job is of the writer, the director, the producer, who everybody else is on it. Every single person that's helping support and hold that up. Everybody's work. Everybody should be working towards that goal. And that's, you know, that's the overall picture, whether it be film, TV, stage, one man show, one woman show, because I'm like straight up, it don't matter who you are, everybody equal to me. But that should be the goal. So. Good stuff on the page, brother. I can't wait. I, Lord help us. We can. 
No, we're going to we're going to we're going to get it. We're going to get it. We're going to get it regardless. And I, I like one of the quotes, one of the quotes that you said. And when my next acting workshop, I am definitely going to say it. Uh, hold a mirror up to to the person and show them they self. That is something deep. That's something that's that's quotable, something that's usable and under, very understandable. It's not just a quote that's, that sounds dope. It's, it ain't it's actually, right. It ain't I, I never, I've never heard it, but I definitely want to implement that. Yes, and I hope every, take it. Take everybody it listening will understand. Oh, Benito Ordolani told me my department of MFA programs, Flint College, 1998. I got to give him his props. God bless him. I don't even know who he is today, but he told me that. He said, this is what you do. You're holding up the mirror. You're showing people themselves. And that's wow. what the crap is. That, the that is... We, so we our whole goal is to inspire by the inspiration you, you just proved that just by that one line alone you just proved that but you also gave a, a, a teaser a spoiler halfway of how we met how did we meet you know tell, tell, tell what, do we, what, what do we got going on man man you know it's this dude <laughs> this one bloke that knows this other bloke tell me all the other bloke you being the other bloke Sean Blakemore, wonderful, wonderful young young man, I should say. Yeah. <laughs> beautiful young man. Uh worked with him on Quad for BT. Had a great time, a couple of seasons, man, with, with Sean. I've known Sean for years throughout the industry, and we knew of each other, had a chance to actually break bread together and work. Um, and love him and his family and, and got a little man that's growing up and and he is that's the one bloke. You're the other bloke. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, yo, there's this dude, man. He's a man, but his name is man. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, he's got a prod. Now, he tossed my name in the hat. Um, you know, Sean tossed me the hat. And I'm yeah. um, saying, hey, man, he, he might be something you know, they can work with on this. And next thing you know, I hear from both of you cats, man. And we sat down and broke bread a little bit a few months ago when life was normal. Yeah. Hey, man, it's been like a few months so since like yesterday, right? It was normal, you know. We had a normal experience at the end of that night, but Ooh. other than that, it was it was it was, it was pretty normal. Exactly. Yeah, but that's why Sean Blakemore hooked me up with Man Robinson, and here I yeah. am sitting here talking right now. And um, yeah. it's a blessing, man, just to have people at least, yeah, like see you, see you, see you move well, around the world. You, been, you was here, you was here for a minute, you know. So yeah, that's how I know. Well, I tell you what, I said. I tell you what, I you know, a lot of times you get referrals or you get people that put, you know, they play the 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 Mac matchmaker in in a sense, and you treat that person. You might not vibe with that person, but you treat them off the referral. Yeah, you know, I treat him. I'm gonna treat you like this because of Sean. But when we met together, we created our own vibe. They just <laughs> overseeded all of that. Yeah, me and Sean got our thing. We super cool, and that hasn't switched. It got stronger. But then me and you was like. One day in the gym. Hey, I'm just calling to see how you're doing, my brother, because God is good. That's you talking to me. You know? <laughs> <laughs> my answer is, yeah, God is good, man. Let's go. So let's go. Working, Let's yeah. go. Let's go. Yeah. So so we're working on this film. Uh yeah. it's called A Love to Die For. Uh you coming in as an actor and 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 I hope that you um know that how much we appreciate you being aboard. We we watch you in films before. And now being able to work with you is nothing short than inspirational and a blessing, bro. So thank you. I thank you very much. Thank you. thank you. Thank you, man. Thank you. And Sean, of course, and everybody else. Thank y'all. Seriously. Okay. So what we what we have now, hold on. What we have now is we have what we call a random thought. And uh -oh. we're going to go on break first. So okay. right now we have. And now it's time for Man Robinson's Random Thought of the Day. Our random thought of today is, it's by Man Robinson, it's debatable. If you want to debate it, it's on you. If not, we keep it in stone and run with it. Beyonce had the best singing performance out, out of everybody in the world, even Whitney Houston, on Cadillac Records, the last closing song, Etta James. That's my random thought. I'm sticking with it. You can debate it if you like. Okay. Uh, love the movie. Huge yeah. fan, not being yeah. politically correct. Loved yeah. it, loved it, loved it. Wish I was in it. Anyway, loved it, loved it, loved it. Um, that song for Etta, you know, I think that, I think that, or rather I know that Beyonce 
the consummate artist that she is. Mm -hmm. And I've heard, because I don't know her per se, but I've heard how hard she works at her craft. So super duper hats off to her performance. There's no, there's no debating that. But mm -hmm. also, I want to say, Mr. Filmmaker, <laughs> there's a combination. No, this is a comp. There's a combination of yeah. a superb performance, and I don't know how to say it's the best performance or whatever. Whatever. I think it was the best performance because of the time it was in, and I ain't trying to back out of it. The best performance of the time that it was in, and the opportunity that was presented, and that's what you got, which was a phenomenal product. And Mr. Filmmaker. <laughs> Yes. There's a storytelling aspect that you do as a. Mm -hmm. You look like that. Yeah. The thing. So I think on top of the super duper awesome performance, I don't have to, I don't try to compare it because I ain't trying to compare it. But I think it's a, there's a marriage, there's a team, there's a there's a collaborative that went on with the filmmaking and the storytelling aspect of that phenomenal experience, and the other wonderful actors and, and people and people that nobody will never see help to make that what it is. So it's a village mm -hmm. that happened, and what we had a chance was to witness something spectacular on all fronts. That's how I feel about it. I'm a huge fan of, of Beyonce, no question. Who wouldn't be? I mean, must be from another planet. So there's that. But then there's also these wonderful, wonderful aspects that happen to in, to uplift and enlighten and to amplify what she brought to the table also. And that and those other aspects also, they are worthy of the same credit because it was a collaborative. That's good filmmaking, brother and good filmmaking and good performance. And that's the experience, you understand? Yes. That's the experience. Nobody's an island. That's a, it's amazing how they all come together, isn't it? It's, 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 a, it's one of the best things and best careers. It is the best career I've ever had. And it's just like magic. It's, it's like a bunch of pictures together. And when it's done, it's done. Come I, on, man. Come I appreciate on. you. There we have it, audience. Uh, Mr. E. Roger Mitchell, he actually came and added his points to my random thought. And I hope you guys got something out of that because everything is a teachable moment. So what you should have learned and what, you know, I think that the point that was trying to be conveyed was it was a beautiful piece, but it was more than just Beyonce. It was a bunch of people. It's a lot of together. things to make that happen, man. There's a lot, a lot of things. things. A lot and of that's moving. good. It's good to share the love. It's good to yes. share because it's worth it. And it did a job, and I remember it uh, wholeheartedly. So, with that being said, we appreciate you coming on to the show. We are wrapping things up. Uh, can you please tell people where to find you? Anything you want to add of what you got coming up, what you're working on? Oh, man, you can find me. I live in Atlanta. You know, you might not be able to find me, but I live in Atlanta. Uh, you can call man. Man, how to find me? <laughs> I know how to find him. All I got to do is man. talk about. <laughs> so say, hey, what's up, brothers? We still love you. And he, 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 man, yes, man, I have my little uh, uh, a Facebook. That I don't, I'm not a big social media guy, obviously, which is not uh, attribute these days. You should be on and on it, but I do have a Twitter. It's e r a j j e r a j j number four real, which is short for E Roger. I got my account before it really got popular, so I just E Roger with e r a j j four real at Twitter and then you have the uh, Facebook is E Raj Mitchell, which is short for E Roger Mitchell. But it started a long time ago, so I didn't think about this. Uh, but man, I know how to find me though. Know. I know how to find you, man. I'm gonna find you in a couple months when we're done with our quarantine so we can get to shooting. Yeah, let's do you know it. I mean? got a project we got a project on Netflix called Outer Banks that's coming up a series occurring on that, which is really, really great. And with the things, the times that are changing, God bless people go out and check it out. It's a nice coming of age piece on Netflix called Outer Banks. A um, couple of independents in the can. Um, not on the stage right now. I may get back on there. Um, but yeah, yeah. And, and the future is bright. And the next one is is Man's Project too. A love to die for is the name of the project. And we are uh, very uh, eager to get back to that because it's a wonderful. 
it's a wonderful thing to even be here. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's you, you gotta love it, and I definitely do, and I, I agree with you, and wholeheartedly about that, uh, about being so concentrated on your craft to be where you are, recognizable face. That I mean, people can know your name all they want, but when you got a recognizable face like yourself, that's that speaks volumes. So I received that. I never thought about it like that, man. That's real. Like, yeah, just don't know your name. Yeah, don't touch it though. Just don't touch it because you know you. Got I can't. To, I, I, my nose is like I just. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I know you want to touch it, yeah, but don't do that. So <laughs> we are over with this show. <laughs> we love you to death, man. We can't wait to work yeah. together and put this project out. And uh, the fans, I hope they understood and got what I needed them to get out of this. Thank you, my brother. Thank you. I will call it's you. It's gonna be better than it was gonna. It's gonna be. It's gonna be better than it was gonna be now because of the times. Damn right. Better. All it's doing it. It's just working out now. Thank you. Man. Getting ready. All right, man. Thank you very much. Have a blessed one. Tell the wife we said hello and goodbye. Hello. Goodbye. <laughs> See no, you later, don't. my brother. Thank you, brother. All right. All right. Thanks. Peace. So we like to thank E. Roger Mitchell for coming out to the podcast behind the scenes with Man Robinson. You feel what I'm saying now? Now do y'all understand? We have inspirational speeches by inspirational people and hope that you be inspired. But I got a thought of the day. I'm sorry, I have a tip of the day. I already had my thought. I had two thoughts. I had a motivated thought and a random thought. Anyway, my tip of the day is concentrate on your craft. Keep it going no matter what. People can only take you as far as they are. I just learned something from E. Roger Mitchell that I'm gonna keep to myself and maybe use it on another podcast. People can only take you as far as they are. I'm Man Robinson. See you next time on Behind the Scenes. Peace. Thanks for tuning in to Behind the Scenes with Man Robinson. Our aim is to genuinely encourage and inspire you with the compelling stories and content we provide in hopes that you'll inspire others. For info on upcoming episodes and all things surrounding film, techniques, and motivation, follow at Man Robinson on all social platforms. View on blackfilm.com, manrobinson.org, or stream anytime on Spotify and iTunes. And now it's time for Man Robinson's Motivational Thought. Black Movie Star. Motivational and Inspirational. Black Movie Star. Welcome back to Behind the Scenes with Man Robinson. We don't just talk about it, we be about it.
for tuning Welcome in back to Behind, to Behind the, the Scenes, scenes with, Man with Man Robinson. Our aim we is to genuinely about it, encourage and inspire you it. with the compelling stories and content we provide in hopes that you'll inspire others. For info on upcoming episodes and all things surrounding film, techniques, and motivation, follow at Man Robinson on all social platforms. View on blackfilm.com, manrobinson.org, or stream anytime on Spotify and iTunes. 